Hello, today we are going to be reassembling this machine. It is Lucian Noon's pianola. He spent a lot of his life gathering a collection of items with the hope to set up a museum later on in life, but sadly passed away earlier this year. There is a link to him talking about this below. Hopefully he would have appreciated the video outlining the pianola's mechanics whilst reassembling it, albeit in my idiotic presentation style. Anyway. Oh God. Hello, how's it going? Today we're going to be putting this thing back together. It's a pianola, self-playing piano, player piano, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's one of those things. Well initially the plan wasn't to dismantle it, uh, but we couldn't actually get out of the house. So the fine folk from the East Midlands Cinema Organ Association ended up taking it to pieces so we could get it around the corner and get it out of the house. Well it was a very nice grow tree in Steinway. Yeah this is going to be an interesting endeavour indeed, I haven't, what, what is this? What, what even is that thing? So this thing isn't any self-playing piano. It's actually a gr Grotrian Steinweg. Uh, so I've heard that Steinway, Steinweg, they were uh, siblings and they split up uh, much like the Twix brothers. And uh, one of them stayed in Brunswick, Brunswick in Germany, I'm assuming. The other one went to America, changed the name to Steinway to make it a little bit more palatable for the American audience. You're gonna have to excuse me because I don't know what any of these things are called. I'm gonna call this the Fufa Nufa. This is it's called the Pumpy Dumpy Doo. I know these, these are keys, ivories, but I'm still probably getting them wrong. The harp, is it? I'm pretty sure. The body waddy woo woo. So yeah, without further ado, let's start putting this back together and figuring out how it works along the way. We got the big boys. One, two. These go in here, but it turns out this was glued on anyway, so it was a bit, bit of a bummer. Let the headaches begin. We've got the levers first, but it's different to a normal piano because they go and do their normal thing by pushing over, lifting up that, which pushes up this thing. But it's also got this random thingamajiggy as well, which is manages to pull it up as well, which I think comes from the player mechanism. So I figured if I put the videos of Carl in reverse, it will show me how to put it back together, right? Well, wrong, it doesn't really work out that way because I wasn't very good at filming it all. But it looks like we've got to put this thing in next after cleaning up all of that Larky. On the bottom of this board is a load of levers. It all just doesn't make sense right now, but it hopefully will start making sense when we get it in. But all of these levers are thanks to these simple controls that are right here. There's a bunch of adjusters and they all connect up. So if I adjust the adjusters, they'll do the adjusty, justy, busty things. Line up the holes. Flathead bleeding screws. Oh my god, I can't see. Wrong screw. Guess I'm a bigger. Okay, done. Sweet. Okay, so this one goes in hither. Ah, I see. I suppose this bar goes over to this one right there. The, I think. Right, so the rest of them are striking me as educated guesses. I think this one goes into here. This thing of a jiggy. Oh no. Oh yeah, maybe. Maybe. This seems a bit, a bit long. Oh, oh, it sits up that way. There we go. Oh, I wish I listened. I'm just looking through the videos right now, trying to figure out where this one and this one goes. There is one right here that's unaccounted for. The rest of them, all of the other levers seem to do finger majiggies at the back. What they're for, not quite sure yet. This goes over there. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Bring that down. Oh, like that. Oh. There we go, this fudging thing, whatever this is, the, the Fufu Magoofa, and take the top of it off and put this through this hole maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's the one. This goes somewhere here. That goes there. This goes there. And this goes there. This must go here, I'm guessing. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's pop this one in. Yeah! Now referring back to the videos, I think the Fufa Nufa is next and it goes on here. There's loads of random tubes dangling from this, so this is going to take a, a bit of a mow. 
I'm not gonna screw this down yet until we figure out what the tubes are doing. What are the tubes doing? Tubes everywhere but nowhere to go. What's going on? So these are for your Themidist. There and there. They all seem to be different sizes, but this one, I seem to remember connected to this splitter box. I'm gonna say splitter box. This one's the smallest size, so let's go. Or is it the medium one? Oh, I don't know. So I'm just I'm gonna put it there for now, and if it's wrong, it's wrong. Oh dear, what are so many random tubes. What the fudge is going on with all these tubes? Funky thing number one. Funky thing number two. Every single screw's a different bleeding size. So we're now at a point where with a normal piano we should put the keys on, uh, but I can't do that until I figure out what all of these pipes underneath them do. All of the pipes are nice and I think the words supple, so they've been done recently, but there's no point me putting in all of the keys and then realizing I put all the pipes in the wrong way around um, that talks to this thing. So I've set up this test setup on trellises. I've got a bit of wood that's drilled into the trellises and I've drilled some holes so we can get the pipes going up into the self-playing mechanism from the foot pedal bellows and pumps and stuff below. I've got it all set up so we can also have a closer look at what this actually does. This is the first bit we get to and it looks really blooming interesting, doesn't it? Look at all of that funkiness. This, I think the actual term for it is called an air engine, air motor. Well, it actually runs on vacuum of air. It runs on the lack of air. There is a bit of foreboding there. We'll need Henry's assistance in a mo. But as you can see, there are five sets of bellows, air chambers, and these all connect up to this, I guess you could call it a crankshaft, basically. And on the other side, they are timed via the same crankshaft uh, to open and close and come to air pressure. So if you see when we open up this, it goes straight into the bellow chamber right there. And the air, well, the lack of air, the vacuum, so it's sucking air from it, is coming into here, well, coming out of here. And this, in essence, sequentially uh, causes a vacuum in each of these bellows, which ends up spinning the crankshaft in a smooth fashion. I mean, I've probably done a bad way of describing that, but that's really interesting. Shall we give it a go? Of course, in this player piano, there isn't a Henry Hoover hiding underneath there. It is this tube which directly connects to the back of the bellow vacuum system thingamajiggy, which we'll have a quick look at in a little bit. But let's carry on going over this absolutely incredible mechanism. So the next thing we get to is this chain driven mechanism. It's even got chain tensioners. How cool is that? If you flick this over to here, it engages this gear with this, and this is play, which means it drives forwards. And this is also air driven, obviously. It's driven by that air motor. So now we can make it go forwards, just like that. This is pushing it forwards, but this linkage is also set up to push this backwards and drive this chain, and then that ends up rewinding it because the piano roll will be in the top right here. Play, rewind, play, rewind. That, the, the funkiness on the play and rewind doesn't stop there. When we flick it over to rewind, this linkage also goes over to the back of here, and there's an air switch right here that in essence turns it off and stops the piano from playing when it's rewinding. So this just kind of shuts all of the actuators at the bottom off. It's, it's, it's amazing. Maybe out of curiosity, when we get it all set up into the piano, we should disengage that so when we're rewinding, we can hear it being played really quickly backwards. That'd be pretty cool. Let's load a piano roll into the player mechanism, like so. We get the hook on the bottom of the piano roll and we pop it into this little hook right there. And now if we click on play, it slowly drives forwards. I'm currently pushing on the pedals at the bottom. It goes down and then after a moment, you'll see it's allegro and then it actually starts playing. I think these might be the sustains because they're called snake baits. So I remember Carl saying something about snake bites. So that controls what are called snake bites, which are in the roll. And they look like snake bites and they're going over to a tube. So I think that's the auto sustain. We'll have a look at that. Um, these are all the notes, of course, and they're running over tiny little holes. So this is what the piano roll goes over. And as you can see, there's a load of tiny little holes. These correlate to the little holes that are inside the piano roll. Each of these holes right here are designated 
designated to a separate note on the piano. Much like the motor, everything in here is vacuum driven. It's not like the organ where the organ blows air out. This is actually sucking. So I think that these are all sucking onto the paper and then the second there's a hole in there, let's air through. That ends up traveling through the pipes around the back into the air pistons that we'll have a look at in a second, which end up playing the piano keys. Oh, yeah, I think so, something like that. Then it goes over to this section. My understanding is this is the tracking section. The whole reason this bit is here is because the piano roll can drift around left and right on the actual roll. So there is a mechanism. This is amazing. There's a mechanism required to actually self-correct the piano roll so it perfectly goes over the holes. So if you look carefully at the roll and this, when I move it, it moves slightly from left to right. It moves the whole shaft, so this side of it, as you can see, I'm moving the actuators, that's all moving as well. So this moves left and right to make sure it is playing perfectly. Now, I'm not 100% sure how this mechanism, this actual self-tracking mechanism actually works, but my guess is it's these outside holes that perfectly line up to the outside of the piano rolls. You can see it lines up just there. So let's say if there's air bleeding from this side, the piano roll needs to go that further that way. So I don't know, it pulls that way. And if it's on the other side, it pulls that way. Uh, that's my guess at the minute. I haven't got it working, so we'll figure it out in a little mo. Now we get to the business end. These are all the things that play the notes on the piano. Uh, there's a bunch of tiny little bellows here. They're all driven by vacuums. So when one of the holes travel through the holes that is selected to one of these bellows, it pushes it up, which ends up hitting the same spot on the hammer of the piano as the key does and it basically it pretty much plays the keyboard for you. Right, I think I've connected our things to make it work uh, in this kind of demonstration setup. So we'll load this piano roll onto it and I'm basically gonna start playing it and you'll see the air solenoids at the back uh, basically responding to the holes on the piano roll. Let's have a go. There we go. The way the solenoids actually receive the air is pretty interesting as well. It's actually through the legs. The legs connect up to this bit, which is uh, connected up to the piano. Then that connects via the tube over to this big lump of junk down here. This is basically a foot powered vacuum pump. This is much like the organ's air capacitor, but it's backwards because it's actually a vacuum reservoir, a vacuum capacitor. When I'm pedaling, it actually sucks in and stores a vacuum instead of stores air. That's awesome, isn't it? There's a bunch of funky, complicated things. I'm still figuring it out. I think this is something to do with the tempo. There's a load of other finger majiggies. And it is a video of when I'm pedaling it from the back. Lovely job, mate. Let's have a quick look at the piano hammer mechanism. This is pretty much exactly the same as any other piano hammer mechanism. The keys hit this bottom bit right here, which ends up flicking the hammer and the hammer goes ba-jung, ba-jung. So the pianola can also hit this at the same time as the key, so there's space for both this punchy thing and the key punchy thing. So that might be the only difference. But yeah, this is, this is pretty much, this is pretty much exactly the same as any other piano. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fit the hammer mechanism. Remember, we're not fitting the keys because the keys would fit here first. Bloody hell. Right, that slot's in there. Thank you. 
So I know some of you are thinking right now, wait, I'm pretty sure the pianola keys are supposed to move by themselves. Well, this is true. And initially I thought it was down to the design of this because it lifted up the hammers that meant that the keys wouldn't fall down. And actually the pianolas that the keys fall down on, the air pushes on this. But it turns out that pretty much all pianolas actually still hit on the hammers. That's because there's a lot less force to hit these than to push these down. I've got a bunch of 1Ps here and we're going to measure the down weight of the key. So what we're going to do is we're going to stack them up on top of each other until the key falls down. So with this keyboard we need 19 1Ps to make it fall down. That's about 68 grams worth of weight to push it down. Which for a piano is a relatively heavy action. And if we take the key back out and have a look on the back of it, you'll notice that there's a couple of lead weights at the back of the key. If we put three coins on this key and then lift up the hammer mechanism with our hands, you'll see that the key actually falls down. But of course, we can't have one piece glued on all the keys, it just wouldn't look right. So what I did is I started and knocked out this lead weight, put it back in and measured how many coins it would take on the front to make it fall down. I then took out this one, which reduced it by two coins, which is about seven grams. I then took both out, measured the weight on the front and found it took three less coins to push it down. Three less coins is just the right amount for the key to fall down when you lift the hammer mechanism up. So what I've done with this key next to it is removed both of the weights. Put it back in and this takes 16 coins to fall down, which is about 50 grams, which is a perfectly adequate key weight for a piano. But it also means when we lift the hammer action up, the key falls down. Oh yeah. Do you know what that means? Well, that means if we do it to all of them, it's gonna look like it's playing itself. <laughs> Well, that took the best part of an afternoon. It turns out the down weight of them all were all varying here, there and everywhere. Of course, all of the weights were different. So it took a bit of trial and error to all consistently be about 16 one piece, which is approximately 55 grams. But that just means it was quite a heavy piano to start with. Why? I'm not sure. But now all of the keys are front heavy. If we lift the hammers, we will see that they drop. Are we ready? Okay. Here we go.
finally. So for today's video, that's it. There was a linkage missing to the Tempo Governor box on the bottom, so we haven't got that wired in yet, and neither is the Auto Sustain. Got a couple of ideas of how to involve this with some interesting things that are non-intrusive modifications. For instance, a MIDI thing that basically drops onto the front of it. I think that'd be pretty cool. I did a Patreon live stream at the end of last week playing through a few of the roles. It was quite a workout pumping it down here. And I'm going to do the very same this Thursday night over on Patreon. So if you're interested, go and check it out over there. Anyway, I'm Look Mum No Computer. This is a Pianola. Have a lovely time. Bye.